Understanding the differences between 60 Hz and 50 Hz electrical systems is crucial for ensuring compatibility and optimal performance of electrical equipment. Let's delve into the advantages and disadvantages of each system. Firstly, let's talk about the advantages of a 60 Hz system. One major advantage is faster perceived motion. Devices and displays refresh more often at 60 Hz, resulting in smoother animations and videos. Secondly, higher efficiency is another benefit. Motors and appliances often operate more efficiently at 60 Hz, consuming less energy compared to 50 Hz systems. Thirdly, compatibility with North American standards is a significant factor, as the majority of appliances and electronic devices in North America are designed for 60 Hz systems. Now, let's consider the disadvantages of a 60 Hz system. Firstly, flickering and buzzing can occur. Devices operating at 60 Hz may exhibit visible flicker or buzzing, especially in certain lighting conditions. Secondly, there can be compatibility issues with international devices. Devices specifically designed for 50 Hz systems may not function correctly or efficiently on 60 Hz systems without proper conversion. Moving on to 50 Hz systems, let's explore their advantages. Firstly, reduced energy consumption is a plus. Devices operating at 50 Hz generally consume slightly less energy than their 60 Hz counterparts. Secondly, broad compatibility with most of the world is a key advantage, as the majority of countries outside of North America utilize 50 Hz systems. Now, let's look at the disadvantages of 50 Hz systems. Firstly, slower perceived motion is a drawback. Devices and displays refresh less frequently at 50 Hz, which can result in a more sluggish or less responsive appearance. Secondly, there's the potential for overheating. Motors and appliances operating at 50 Hz may generate more heat compared to 60 Hz operation, potentially increasing the risk of overheating if not properly designed or cold. What happens when you use 60 Hz equipment on 50 Hz systems or vice versa? Let's explore the effects. When using 60 Hz equipment on 50 Hz systems, several issues can arise. Firstly, reduced motor speed is common. Motors rated for 60 Hz will operate approximately 16.7% slower on 50 Hz systems. This reduction in speed can significantly affect the performance of equipment designed for a specific operating speed. Secondly, the lifespan of the equipment might be shortened. The increased heat generated by motors operating at a lower frequency than their rated frequency can shorten their lifespan due to increased stress on components. Thirdly, overheating of transformers is a concern. Transformers designed for 60 Hz systems may overheat if used with 50 Hz equipment because they are not designed to efficiently handle the lower frequency. Now, let's examine the effects of using 50 Hz equipment on 60 Hz systems. Firstly, faster motor speed can occur. Motors rated for 50 Hz will operate approximately 16.7% faster on 60 Hz systems. This increase in speed can lead to increased noise and potential wear on the motor and connected equipment. Secondly, increased vibrations are often observed. The higher operating speed may cause increased vibrations in devices, which can lead to mechanical stress and potential damage over time. Thirdly, there is a potential for damage to the equipment. Operating devices at a frequency higher than their rated frequency may cause damage or premature failure due to increased stress and heat. In summary, the choice between 60 Hz and 50 Hz systems depends on regional standards, the type of equipment being used, and desired performance characteristics. It's essential to ensure that the equipment is operated at its rated frequency to prevent damage, overheating, and reduce performance. When using equipment designed for one frequency on a system with a different frequency, it's important to consider the potential effects on motor speed, lifespan, transformer operation, and overall system performance. Consulting with qualified electrical engineers or technicians is always recommended to ensure proper compatibility and safe operation. Remember that electrical systems must adhere to the National Electrical Code, or NEC. Understanding the NEC is crucial for safe and compliant electrical installations. Always consult the latest edition of the NEC and local regulations for specific requirements. 
Now let's delve deeper into some of the specific aspects of 60Hz and 50Hz systems, focusing on practical considerations. When it comes to lighting, 60Hz systems might exhibit more noticeable flicker, particularly with older lighting technologies like fluorescent lights. This flicker can be fatiguing to the eyes over extended periods. Modern LED lighting, however, often mitigates this issue due to their high refresh rates and electronic drivers. In contrast, 50 Hz systems generally have less noticeable flicker in lighting applications. Regarding motor applications, the choice between 60 Hz and 50 Hz can significantly impact motor performance. As previously mentioned, a 60 Hz motor operating on a 50 Hz system will experience a reduction in speed. This can be problematic in applications where precise speed control is essential, such as in manufacturing processes or certain types of machinery. Conversely, a 50 Hz motor operating on a 60 Hz system will run faster, potentially leading to increased wear and tear, vibration, and even damage to the motor and connected equipment. In the context of power distribution, transformers play a critical role in stepping voltage up or down to match the requirements of different equipment. When a transformer designed for 60 Hz is used on a 50 Hz system, it can lead to core saturation and overheating. This is because the transformer core is designed to operate within a specific frequency range, and operating outside of this range can cause inefficiencies and excessive heat generation. Similarly, using a 50 Hz transformer on a 60 Hz system can also lead to inefficiencies and potential damage. In terms of appliance compatibility, many modern appliances are designed to operate on a wide range of frequencies and voltages. However, older appliances may be more sensitive to frequency variations. For example, a clock designed for 60 Hz will run slower on a 50 Hz system, while a clock designed for 50 Hz will run faster on a 60 Hz system. Similarly, appliances with timers or other frequency-dependent components may not function correctly if operated on the wrong frequency. It's also important to consider the impact of frequency on power quality. In general, 60 Hz systems tend to have slightly better power quality due to the higher frequency allowing for faster response times and power correction equipment. However, both 60 Hz and 50 Hz systems can experience power quality issues such as voltage sags, voltage swells, and harmonic distortion, which can affect the performance of sensitive electronic equipment. When dealing with sensitive electronic equipment such as computers, servers, and medical devices, it's crucial to ensure that the equipment is properly protected from power quality issues. This can be achieved through the use of uninterruptible power supplies, or ups, surge protectors, and power conditioners. These devices can help to filter out noise, stabilize voltage, and provide backup power in the event of a power outage. In industrial settings, the choice between 60 Hz and 50 Hz systems can have significant implications for productivity and efficiency. For example, in a manufacturing plant where precise speed control is essential, Using the correct frequency is crucial for ensuring that machines operate at the correct speed and produce consistent results. Similarly, in a data center where uptime is critical, it's important to have a reliable power system that can provide clean and stable power to sensitive electronic equipment. When planning electrical installations, it's important to consider the long-term costs and benefits of each system. While 50 Hz systems may offer slightly lower energy consumption, 60 Hz systems may offer better performance and compatibility with a wider range of equipment. Ultimately, the best choice will depend on the specific application and the needs of the user. In addition to frequency, voltage is another important factor to consider when dealing with electrical systems. In North America, the standard voltage for residential applications is typically 120 volts while in many other parts of the world, the standard voltage is 220 to 240 volts. It's important to ensure that equipment is operated at its rated voltage to prevent damage and ensure safe operation. When using equipment designed for one voltage on a system with a different voltage, it's necessary to use a voltage transformer to step the voltage up or down to the appropriate level. Voltage transformers are available in a wide range of sizes and configurations to accommodate different voltage requirements. 
When selecting a voltage transformer, it's important to choose a transformer that is properly sized for the load and that meets all applicable safety standards. In summary, understanding the differences between 60Hz and 50Hz systems is crucial for ensuring compatibility, optimal performance, and safety of electrical equipment. By considering the advantages and disadvantages of each system, as well as the potential effects of using equipment designed for one frequency on a system with a different frequency, you can make informed decisions about electrical installations and equipment selection. Always consult with qualified electrical engineers or technicians to ensure that electrical systems are designed and installed in accordance with all applicable codes and standards. It is important to note that there are exceptions. The information in this narration is for educational purposes only and should not be considered a substitute for professional electrical engineering advice. Always consult with a qualified electrician for any electrical work. The NEC Table 310.15 provides guidance on opacity. NEC Section 210.21 covers the use of receptacle ratings. For example, a 20 amp branch circuit can supply multiple 15 amp receptacles. NEC Article 430 covers motor circuits and motor overload protection. NEC Table 430.52 dictates the maximum rating of the motor branch circuit over current protection device. Motors operating on different frequencies will exhibit different performance characteristics. A motor designed for 60 Hz operation will have a different synchronous speed than the same motor operating on 50 Hz. The synchronous speed of an alternating current motor is determined by the formula synchronous speed equals 120 times the frequency divided by the number of poles. Therefore, reducing the frequency from 60 Hz to 50 Hz will reduce the synchronous speed by a factor of 50 divided by 60, or approximately 0.833. This means that a motor with a synchronous speed of 1800 revolutions per minute at 60 Hz will have a synchronous speed of approximately 1500 revolutions per minute at 50 Hz. It is essential to consider this speed reduction when selecting motors for applications where precise speed control is necessary. Moreover, operating a motor at a frequency lower than its rated frequency can also affect its torque characteristics. The torque developed by an alternating current motor is proportional to the square of the voltage and inversely proportional to the frequency. Therefore, reducing the frequency can result in a reduction in torque, which can affect the motor's ability to start and accelerate loads. To compensate for the reduction in torque, it may be necessary to increase the voltage applied to the motor. However, it is important to ensure that the voltage does not exceed the motor's rated voltage, as this can lead to overheating and damage. In addition to the effects on motor speed and torque, operating a motor at a different frequency than its rated frequency can also affect its efficiency. The efficiency of an alternating current motor is defined as the ratio of output power to input power. Operating a motor at a different frequency can reduce its efficiency due to increased losses in the motor's windings and core. These losses can be caused by increased eddy currents and hysteresis losses in the core, as well as increased resistance losses in the windings. To minimize these losses, it is important to select a motor that is designed for the specific frequency at which it will be operated. Furthermore, transformers are designed to operate at a specific frequency and voltage. Operating a transformer at a different frequency or voltage can lead to several problems, including core saturation, increased losses, and reduced efficiency. Core saturation occurs when the magnetic flux density in the transformer core exceeds the core saturation point. This can cause the transformer to draw excessive current, which can lead to overheating and damage. Increased losses in the transformer can be caused by increased eddy currents and hysteresis losses in the core, as well as increased resistance losses in the windings. These losses can reduce the transformer's efficiency and increase its operating temperature. To avoid these problems, it is important to select a transformer that is designed for the specific frequency and voltage at which it will be operated. Finally, when dealing with electrical systems, it is essential to follow all applicable codes and standards. These codes and standards are designed to ensure the safe and reliable operation of electrical systems, and they provide guidance on topics such as wiring methods, overcurrent protection, grounding, and bonding.
Failure to follow these codes and standards can lead to electrical hazards such as shock, fire and equipment damage. Therefore, it is important to consult with a qualified electrician to ensure that all electrical work is performed in accordance with all applicable codes and standards. One important consideration is the grounding and bonding of electrical systems. Grounding is the connection of electrical equipment to the earth, while bonding is the connection of metallic parts of the electrical system together. Grounding and bonding are essential for providing a low impedance path for fault current to flow back to the source, which helps to trip over current protection devices and prevent electrical shock hazards. It is important to follow all applicable codes and standards when grounding and bonding electrical systems, as improper grounding and bonding can create electrical hazards. Another important consideration is overcurrent protection. Overcurrent protection devices, such as circuit breakers and fuses, are designed to protect electrical circuits from overloads and short circuits. These devices are designed to trip and interrupt the flow of current when the current exceeds a certain level, which helps to prevent damage to equipment and electrical hazard. It is important to select overcurrent protection devices that are properly sized for the electrical circuits they are protecting. Undersized overcurrent protection devices may trip unnecessarily, while oversized overcurrent protection devices may not provide adequate protection. Additionally, it is important to ensure that overcurrent protection devices are properly maintained and tested to ensure that they are functioning correctly. Wiring methods are also an important consideration when dealing with electrical systems. Wiring methods refer to the types of conductors and raceways that are used to install electrical circuits. There are many different types of wiring methods available, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. It is important to select wiring methods that are appropriate for the specific application and environment. For example, in wet locations, it is important to use wiring methods that are designed to be resistant to moisture. In hazardous locations, it is important to use wiring methods that are designed to be explosion-proof. Additionally, it is important to follow all applicable codes and standards when installing wiring methods, as improper wiring methods can create electrical hazards. Lastly, proper labeling and identification of electrical equipment is crucial for the safe and efficient operation of electrical systems. All electrical equipment should be clearly labeled with its voltage, current, and other important ratings. Additionally, all electrical circuits should be clearly identified with their function and the equipment they serve. Proper labeling and identification helps to prevent confusion and errors, which can lead to electrical hazards. In conclusion, understanding the principles of 60 Hz and 50 Hz systems, as well as the applicable codes and standards, is essential for the safe and reliable operation of electrical systems.